Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to the Hanamar Flower Class. I just got done teaching this for the Napa Public Library, and I'm so excited to share it with you today. So let's go ahead and talk about the things that we're going to need for class. I'm going to be working with the Micron PN pen, but you can work with your favorite Micron or Tangle pen. I'm using a graphite pencil for my string and for doing some shading later on. With that graphite pencil, I'm going to be using a tortillon or a blender stump. If you don't have one of these, grab a Q-tip. Those are great little tools to use in lieu of that. At the very end of class, I'm going to be doing some highlighting with a white gel pen. I have the Mizu Love, but you can use the Sakura or the Uniball. You know me, I'm a Prisma color girl, so grab your color pencils because we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Make sure that you've got a white uh, color pencil in your set. This is great for blending, and this is the one that comes with the Prisma color set. But if you're using another color set like Polychromos or um, whatever your favorite color set is, make sure you've got a white pencil in there to work with. Lastly, I'm going to be working with the Genesis tile from TangledYogi.com. This paper is super, super smooth and really great for receiving color pencils. If you're interested in working with these, they're at the Tangled Yogi shop, and I really do work hard to make sure that you guys have great paper. If you don't have the, the tiles today, you can always just make a square in your sketchbook that's four and so we're going to begin by doing the dots in our four corners here. This is the regular old-fashioned Zen Tangle way of beginning by putting our dots in the corner. And you can see that I'm working with my graphite pencil. And we're going to just start by connecting our dots. You can see that I'm taking my time. And I'm going to turn the tile and start to connect my dots. Turning the tile. And just letting yourself enjoy bringing these together. Now once I have my border put on the piece here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit more to it. So we're going to just build a string so that we can find center. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to the top here and find the middle, and the bottom here and find the middle, and then I'm just going to go ahead and connect my dots. I'll turn the tile and I'll do the same thing again. And you can see it's slightly off, but that's okay. Remember, we're just here to enjoy ourselves. We're not looking for perfection. So you can see now, if I bring this up nice and close, I've divided the space here. And so we've got this really nice area where we can find center. So go ahead and do just that. And then when we come back, we're going to start to begin the tangle of Hanamar. Okay, so we're going to start to build the tangle, and we're going to talk about the name of the tangle. The name of the tangle is called Hanamar, and it's by Shay Naratomi, and she's a wonderful tangler. You should definitely check her out on Facebook and on Instagram. She is really somebody that I look to. She's very inspiring. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by bringing a circle right into the center of this piece, and I would say that this circle is probably a little bit smaller than a dime. Okay, so there's my circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do an aura around that circle. And you can see that I'm still doing this with my pencil because we're going to build the string here. Okay, now I want you to think of the solar system. Whenever I'm doing this tangle, I always think of the solar system. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here and I'm going to make a smaller circle right along this line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to line up these circles as we go. And we want them to be pretty evenly spaced, so I'm really just taking my time with this. Okay. 
looking for where it's going to land inside of the little circle here. And you can see that it really does look like planets rotating around the sun. Isn't that fun? I just love it. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue by attaching those circles to the main circle. And I'm going to continue using my, uh, my pen just for a moment more. So all we're going to do is we're going to come down from the right hand side of the first circle and attach to the left hand side of the main circle. I'm going to turn my tile counterclockwise and I'm going to do it again, dropping out of the right and going to the left side of that circle. Coming in, coming down from the right and dropping into the left. Coming down from the right and into the left. Coming down from the right and into the left. And you're starting to get the rhythm of it, which is really fun. So you can see that you get this really fun little almost star-like shape. So go ahead and finish yours. I'm going to finish up mine and when we come back we're going to pick up our pens and start to do the rest of the tangle. So we have our string and I've picked up my Micron PN pen here and I'm just going to go ahead and overdraw right over my string here. So we've just laid out the groundwork for what is going to become Hanamar. So I'm just taking my time with this. A little blurp. That's just fine. And then I'm going to go ahead just the same way that I did when I started. I'm going to just do my circles first. And what this does is it gives you this felt memory of how you created the tangle. So I always love to do an overdraw on my strings because it helps me to remember how I did it because I know I'll come back to this tangle and use it again in another composition or another, um, another place. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by attaching again. I'm just taking my time. And don't forget to breathe as you're doing this. Okay, so once I have that, what we're going to do is we're going to start to add more circles into the piece. And the circles are going to be about the same size, maybe just a skosh smaller. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up. So in between the circles that we already have, I'm bringing in a new circle. Now once I've had a chance to go all the way around, what we're going to do is we're going to bring that circle and attach it to these little um, arms of the star. Okay, And it's going to look a little bit like the letter Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the left hand side of the circle and I'm just going to bring it in and attach. And you can see how that looks like the letter Y. Okay. So I'm going to just turn counterclockwise and I'm going to go off of the left side of the circle and attach in the same spot. So you can see that I'm looking to have them attach in about the same spot. Turning the tile. And this class is a little bit more of a mandala class because we're working circular. In fact, my last two classes have been really circular. I don't know what's going on there. Perhaps I'm needing to 
work with mandalas. So you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and it's really really fun. I love seeing the way that that works. It's such a fun tangle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go around the outside of the tangle and we're going to create an aura. And the aura is just going to go around each of the circles. So you're going to see me come into the middle here and I'm going to dance in between each part of the tangle or each part of where the circles are. So you can see that I'm just taking my time and landing right in between those two circles. And this gives a really nice completion to the tangle which is lovely. It almost contains it, if you will. I'm just landing back into center. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to add even more to this tangle. So we're going to continue on with Hanamar here and what we're going to do is we're going to look for the spaces where the two circles have that connection. So you can see there's the connection right in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a wave-like shape in here. So you're going to see me come up and then over and that's going to give me a wave. Okay. I'm going to turn my tile counterclockwise. I'm looking for the two circles that are facing in. Here's the connection and I'm going to come in again, same spot and create a wave turning my tile counterclockwise. Here's my two and coming up and in. Looking for the two circles coming up and in. Looking for the two circles up and in. Two circles two circles, two circles. And so now we have completed and come back to center. Take your time with this and then when we come back we're going to add even more. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a minute. So you can see why I love this tangle so much. There's so much going on with it and it's really, really fun. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look for these legs that are inside of the piece. You can see that we've got these really great long strands to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a petal like shape that's going to attach to the center. So I'm going to come up towards the top. You can see I'm in between these two circles. I'm going to come down and create a petal that's going to land right here and then I'm going to come in and land right there. So you can see that that's going to create a beautiful petal inside of the piece. So I'm going to turn for the next one. So I'm going to go right where the two circles are creating a petal that's going to stretch down and come in. Turning the tile, bringing it in, and attaching. Coming down, bringing it in, and attaching. Taking your time, starting where the circles are, trying to keep it as even as you can. It's a really great challenge for your brain Often Zentangle is referred to yoga for your brain or Sudoku for your brain. It's a good stretch. 
All right, so go ahead and finish up yours. Look at how cool that looks. I'm just loving it, so I'm hoping you're enjoying it too. All right, I'll see you in a minute. So now that we have the basic detailing of the piece, we're going to start to add some real definition to it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the wave here and I'm going to create a little aura that goes right under each wave. So I'm just taking my time with this and creating an aura. And then once I've had a chance to go around and create that aura, I'm going to go down into the V of this and we're going to add a little fescue into it. Fescue is just a line with a little teardrop that comes off of it. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that. And then once I've had a chance to bring fescue into it, I'm going to do a little aura around the fescue. So I'm going to turn, come up, and bring an aura. So I'm turning, fescue, and an aura. So we're just working where the waves are, really keeping your mindfulness set on the waves. It would be easy to fall into one of those petals, so we really want to be mindful of that. And look at the neat detail that comes just from adding a little bit of fescue with that. So go ahead and finish that up and then when we come back we're going to add in a little bit more detailing into the petals that we have here. So now we're going to bring a little bit of detailing into our petals that we have here. And what this is going to look like is I'm going to zoom in right here on the bottom piece. And you're going to see me come from the tip of the petal here and I'm going to travel up to the center and I'm going to put a little triangle on the end of it right there. I'm going to do the same thing over here and bring a little triangle on the end of that and then one more time right in here. So we're going to bring a little bit of that darker edge into the piece. It's going to give a kind of a graphic feel. So I'm going to come and travel again. You can see that I'm just turning my tile and bringing a little triangle on there. And one more time. And you're going to see me start to travel around the whole piece doing just that. And it's going to give it a really nice graphic quality. So just working inside of those pieces. So there you can see when I zoom out, look at the difference between here and there. Pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up these. You go ahead and do yours. And then when we come back, we're going to start to work in the outer areas. 
So now we're going to add a little bit to the outer edges and in these two corners right here we're going to add a tangle called Toodles and Toodles is basically, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this so that you can learn it with me here. We're going to make a soft kind of S-like pattern that's going to drop down and in. You can see there's kind of just a gentle wave to that and then I'm going to just go ahead and add an aura right at the bottom. Now once I have that, remember how we used fescue in here? I'm going to add two fescues on either side of that division line. And we'll go ahead and we will puddle those in. And then I'm going to come down from the top and create a petal-like shape that's going to wrap around those two fescues. And so that is going to bring in a really nice leaf on the outside of this. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another aura that's going to come right down and in and right down and in on the other side. So that when I turn you can see that this really gives a nice feeling on both sides. So let's go ahead and turn it and we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to go ahead and do a soft S just like so and then we're going to go ahead and add the fescues and then we'll come in and create that really nice leaf-like shape that's going to round and ground the piece. I'm going to come in and I'm going to go ahead and do another aura and then I'm going to do another aura. So that's going to be our leaf-like shape that's going to hold on to the piece right here. So go ahead and put in your toodle flower or your toodle leaf there and we're going to be adding a little bit more to this but just go ahead and start with these first. So I like to layer my leaves when I'm doing them so I'm going to come in right next to this and I'm going to do another toodles right in here and you can see that it's starting to kind of attach to the main part of the piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do my fescues and what I love about this is that it's going to give it a feeling of overlap and underlap. So I'm going to come in and let it drop behind this leaf and then come in and then I'll let it come over here and drop in. I'll let it have that aura that we're doing around it and then I'll go ahead and I'll do another one on the other side. So I'm just going to go in, add that kind of lazy S shape, create right in here and then I'm dropping in and dropping in and then over here and over here. So you can see that that really gives a nice grounding over there. So I'm going to just flip the piece and do it again. So I'm just coming back over to the side here and creating that really nice fescue and then dropping in, coming around and once again. Let's go to the other side and dropping in and dropping in. And you can see that that really gives this nice feeling of just this kind of flow that's moving through the piece. So go ahead and finish up yours and then when we come back we're going to introduce a new tangle and start to build our border. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start to build in our border. And you're going to see me start to just add in those lines that we were using earlier. But you'll notice that when I have the tangle that's over here, this toodles, I have to work around it. I'm not going to just let that line go through it. I almost want it to feel like it's breaking out of the piece. And so I'm going to come in over here and I'm going to do the same. just like so. So you can see now I'm going to come in and I'm going to make a really fun shape. This is a tangle that I've just come across recently and really liked it and it's called Oyster Roid. And it's a really nice tangle. I really enjoy it because it's got a lot of texture to it. So Oysteroid is so nice because you can really fill a space with it. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a nice circle here. And then inside of that circle I'm going to build another circle. And then I'm going to build another circle. Now once I have that, I'm going to come in and I'm going to just leave a nice heavy line there and I'm going to puddle that line in. I'm going to go again and add another one. And then in here I'm going to do the same. Now what I love about Oystroid is you can build them in clusters, which is really fun. And you can change the shape if you want to, too, which is really fun. So I'm just going to do another circle in here. And then I'll build another aura inside. And then another aura inside. And then I'm going to go ahead and aura that. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do another. And I'll do another. And I think I'm going to come over here and add a cluster right over here. So I'm just going to do another one. And then I'll build my circle. And another circle. And start to build those really fun clusters of shapes, which is so neat. They have so much dimension to them, which I really love. And you can make them as big or as small as you like. So I'm going to go ahead to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to come in and start to bring in that circle. I think I might make that a little bit bigger. And you can see that I'm just kind of playing with the shape. And then I'll come in and add the aura behind it. I'm just pulling it in. And pulling it in again. And just cleaning that up. And coming around and doing another one, and another one, and another one. And this almost looks like another tangle called Bunzo that has kind of that same feeling, but the technique is a little bit different. Let's do another one over here. And then I'll come in and just get that going. So go ahead and finish up your Oysteroid. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to add a little bit into the background. 
So I was recently in a class with one of my favorite tanglers, Zen Linnea, and she used a technique where she drew these lines in the background that really made the piece feel very graphic and very cool. And so we're going to use this technique that she that she taught and we're going to add it to our piece. I just really loved the way that it filled up a space really, really nicely and gave it a graphic feel. So I'm just going to start right here at the top and you're going to see me just make a line right where there was the division line. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to draw these little lines that are going to go and fill the space. So you're going to see me come over to the other side and do the same. And I love taking classes from other teachers and learning different techniques. What I love about this technique is if you don't have a really thick pen to do a ton of puddling with, you can use this technique to fill in the space and give a little bit more gravity to the piece that's in front. And I just thought it was a brilliant idea and wanted to share it with you all. I'm going to come over here and you can see that I'm just auraing that border. And getting in. And you can already see that that's starting to bring a really nice gravity to the piece. Same thing over here. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to drop in. taking my time. And it's really hypnotic too, in the way that puddling is hypnotic. And I'm just going to continue to work through when I taught at Riley Street, I had a student that really did not enjoy the puddling process and she did these lines as well. And I just remember her pieces always came out so beautifully with these lines. And look at how fun that is. It really gives it a nice feel. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine. You can see I've got a few more spaces to puddle or rather put lines into. And then when we come back, we're going to start with color. Okay, so I'm going to pick up two colors, but before we get started, I forgot to mention who was the creator of Oysteroid, and it's Joni, Jody Genovese, I believe is how she says her name, and it's just a beautiful, um, beautiful tangle, so I wanted to give a shout out to Jody as well. So we're going to go ahead and start to pick up a yellow and a green. The yellow that I have in my hand today is PC1002. This is the yellow to orange. And then I'm also going to be working with the grass green, which is PC909. And the way that we're going to start is we're going to start by working with the leaves on the outside edge. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on Toodles here. And I'm just going to very lightly start to dust in Toodles. And Toodles, I believe, is a headquarters tangle, so coming from Zentangle Inc. here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to go in really, really lightly with that green, and then I'm going to come back around and I'm going to start to dust in a little bit more right around the edge of the piece. You guys might hear my puppy in the background. She's getting a drink of water. So you can see that I'm dusting this in and getting a really nice kind of shadow going all around the outside edge and right through the middle of the piece. 
Now I'm going to come up around the other side and I'm going to pick up the yellow and I'm going to dust really, really lightly with this color. And remember that we're, we're going to be layering our colors here, so we really want to go lightly so that we can leave space for these other colors to come in. So I'm going to come in now and I'm going to start to dust in a little bit of that yellow. and drop in just like so. Now once I have that, some of you know that I do love to work with white to get a really nice blend inside of the leaves and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in over here to the green first and I'm just going to start to blend in that darker green with the lighter green. And I'm just working with little circles to soften it up. And then I'll go to the other side and I'll do the same, but you want to make sure that you clean off your pencil so that you're not dragging that other color into the yellow. So we're working on getting a really nice contrast. So I'm going to go around to each of these leaves and treat them the same way. So I'm going to go over here as well. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine and then when we come back we're going to start to work inside of Hanamar. So you can see that I've had an opportunity to add those colors in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to carry my color throughout the piece here and that's going to give the eye a little place to land. So I'm going to take this green and yellow combination and I'm going to start to bring it into the center. So I'm going to zoom in right in here and I'm going to start to dust into the space here. So you can see that I'm going very very lightly with that color pencil. This is the dark grass green that I have here and you can see that the pencil is moving in little circles and that's just going to give this a little bit of interest. And it's also going to give a little bit more of a mist of color instead of you know a little bit of scratch lines here. So you can see that as I'm working through here I'm starting to get that really nice light source in that upper left hand corner. And then I'm going to start to press a little bit harder on the outside edge of the gemstone here. I'm sorry if you're picking up any background noise. We're having some construction <laughs> here. So I'm going ahead and I am just dusting that through with a little bit more pressure. So I would say that this is like an even medium pressure that I'm using here. And then finally right around the edge I'm going to push nice and hard. I want to get that rich emerald green kind of look in the center of my piece here. So you can see that I'm just bringing that through on the outside edge. Now once I have that I'm going to pick up my yellow pencil and I'm just going to start to dust in a little bit of yellow very very lightly through the palest form of green that we have there. And this is going to give kind of a unique feeling to the stone almost as if there's a little bit of discoloration in there. And then you're going to see me pick up my white pencil and I'm going to work with that white pencil by working in the back first. So I'm working in the area that has the darkest green and I'm just slightly dragging it forward here. And then I'm going to start to blend into where the yellow and that darker green are meeting. And you can see that it's almost giving that yellow a highlight. So it really has a nice kind of blended feel to it. 
Now once I have that, I'm going to pick back up my black graphite pencil and I'm going to start to dust around behind just giving this a little bit of drama. And you can see that I'm going fairly lightly here with it. Just getting that nice kind of soft feeling to it. Getting a nice shadow in there. And then once again, I'm going to pick up that white pencil and I'm going to blur the edge of where the graphite is meeting the green. So you can see that that's getting this really nice softness. Normally we would pick up a tortillon for this, but I've really been experimenting with having the white pencil and the graphite work together and I really like it. I'll come back in and just give a little harder edge right where the black is meeting the green. I'll just give that a nice feel. Now I'm just going to come in and do a little blurring, not too, too much. And look at how beautiful that stone is that really just gets your eye to be drawn right to it. And if you feel like you want to work a little bit more where the white is, you can always blur in a little bit more around the white. So go ahead and finish up yours and then when we come back, we're going to start to work with the flower in the center. So one of my favorite color combinations is purple with green. It just brings me a lot of relaxation. I don't know why it soothes me, but it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on these petals right in here. And I'm going to be working with the uh, blush pink, which is PC928, and I also have in my hand the Dahlia Purple. These two work really nicely with each other, and this is going to give this a real spring type of feel. So I'm going to come into where I have these petals, and you're going to see me start to just do a nice dust over on this petal. You can see I'm going right over the black in here and getting it really kind of this beautiful light pink color. I'm not going heavy with it, just really lightly. I'm going to pick up the Dahlia Purple now and I'm going to start to give a shadow that's coming off of the edge on the inside here. So you're going to see me just do a light dusting of that purple. And then I'm also going to do it on the back end of the petal in here. Now I'm going to press a little bit harder in the tip there and right in where we have this beautiful petal that's right in front of it. You're going to see me pick up my pencil and just do a light dusting of that pink again. And we get this really beautiful sheen inside of that petal. Now I am going to pick up a little bit of my white and I want to make sure there's no color on it from the green. And you're going to see me just lightly start to blend in those two areas. And I'm getting this really nice softness that's coming through. So I'm going to do that in each and every petal that I have going around here. You go ahead and do yours and really just enjoy the blending and working with these two colors. There's something very soothing about working with the pink and the purple. And remember, if you don't have the same colors, just get in the same hue. You'll be just fine. Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around and that is really starting to come to life here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in on this and we're going to start to work in the area where we have our fescue here. And I'm going to start just by adding a dusting of blue into the areas where we've got fescue. And just starting to bring in a little bit of that interesting light color. You can see I'm going very, very lightly here, just a light dusting. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of heaviness right at the bottom, right in here and right over here. 
Now I am going to pick up, and let me just be clear about what color blue I just used. This is the Light Cerulean and this is PC904. Now I'm also going to pick up a darker color and this is the Copenhagen blue and this is PC, I believe it's 936. And I'm just going to come in and dust a little bit of that Copenhagen blue in here for some depth. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pick up a little bit of the white as well and I'm going to start to dust down into where that darker blue is and kind of pull it up a little bit and smooth this whole area out and you're going to see that this is going to bring kind of a, a nice like ombre feel into that area. So I'm going to go all the way around and do just that in every single one of those little um, wave-like places. And you know it wasn't by accident that that felt like a wave and I wanted it to to have that blue in there. Okay so you go ahead and do yours and then when we come back we're going to add a little bit more. So I'm going to take that same color combination and you can see that this is really starting to soften in this area here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out to where we have the oysteroids here and I'm going to do a little bit of a dusting inside of the oysteroids. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to leave the small parts alone, the circular parts, and I'm just going to come in and do a little bit of a dusting with that blue right in here and right over here. And you can see that I'm leaving a really nice light source in there. And I'll do the same thing over here. So just coming in and getting those going. Same thing in here. And then once I have those dusted in with the light blue, I'm going to pick up that darker blue and bring a little bit of depth into the sides. And then I'll pick up a little bit of white and start to blur out my edges. And the same thing over here. And you can see that this really brings a lot of dimension into those tangles. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. You're going to see me pick up that darker blue. This is that Copenhagen blue again. And over here as well. And then I'll blur it out with a little bit of that white, just getting that really nice soft color. And same thing in here. And you can see that when I zoom out, look at how cool that looks. It really brings a nice dimension into the piece. I love the way that those are kind of popping off the page. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to work in the little wings of the piece here. So we're going to come up into these little areas right in here. So we're going to start to get up into the wings of this flower here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my graphite pencil that we started with and we're going to do a little bit of work with the graphite. And what it's going to look like is I'm going to start by just adding a really soft dusting of the graphite down at the bottom. And I love the way that the gray plays off of the purple. It's just really beautiful. And then I'm going to come up here where I have this roundabout in here and I'm just going to start to dust in on both sides. And 
And then I'm also going to add a little bit of a dusting right here at the top. So once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up a tortillon. Now if you don't have a blender stump, you can always pick up a Q-tip. That always works perfectly for this, so don't worry if you don't have it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of blending in here with that graphite. And you can see that I'm working in little circular motions to get that graphite to move. And this is almost going to give this a metallic feel, which is going to be so cool with this. And then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of my graphite again, and I'm going to add a little dusting of darkness right in here and in here. I'll also come down in here as well and give it a little bit of a push. Coming back in with that blending stump and blurring out the edges. And you can see that that really gives it a lot of dimension. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to go all the way around and do mine. And I know that this is a lot of work, but let yourself just get into the groove of what you're doing. Really just be present for it and enjoy working with the graphite. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go around and that's really starting to bring some nice kind of metallic feel into this. Now this is where things are really going to get interesting because we're going to start to work with the background and the background is going to start to make that flower pop right off the page. So remember that purple we were working with earlier with the light pink? We're going to be using those two colors again and what we're going to do is we're going to lay down a foundation of color and and then add some shading to it. So I've got that blush pink back in my hand here and we're going to just zoom in just a little bit. Now when you have a large area in which you are working with, you want to work on the side of your pencil instead of the tip because there's so much more of the lead that you can work with. So I'm going to start with that pink there and you're going to see me start to come in and bring that pink all around the flower here. So I'm just working on the side of the pencil and I'm going to turn the page to make it work for my hands here. Just laying that down, getting a nice shadow going of color. And this is where that background is going to be so interesting because it's going to be a little bit quieter now that I'm putting color over the top of it. And I love to layer colors and textures together in my Zen Tangles. I think it makes it more interesting. So once I've had a chance to do that, I'm going to come in with that darker purple. This is that dahlia purple that we were working with before. And you're going to see me start to create a shadow around the piece. So you can see that I've got the pink already down and now I'm going to go over it with that really beautiful, it's almost like a grape color. And what this does is it lays down a really nice foundation for that shadow and I'm not pressing hard. I'm actually going really light because this has a lot of pigmentation to it. And you can see that I'm just 
dancing into these valleys and peaks. And I'll just do half so that you can really get the idea and then start on your own. So you can see that I'm in this little quadrant right in here. Now I'm going to pick up that pink again and I'm going to start to blur out where the purple is meeting the pink. I'm trying to get the idea of that color just softly blending. Coming in over here and getting that color to soften in here. Little circles along the line where the purple is meeting the pink. You can see that the pencil is working in little circles here. And already as I'm looking at this, look at how beautiful that's starting to just kind of bleed out. It's almost like the color is like a watercolor just kind of bleeding out from the center and working its way outward. It really has a nice feel to it. And also notice how it's bringing this tangle much further forward, which is really cool. So once you have that, you can go ahead and add just a little dusting around the outside edge with that darker purple. And you're going to see me pick up that pencil again and just do a light dusting so that it blurs out and kind of gets a soft feel to it. And it also brings in a really neat highlight in the center. So I'm going to go around to all of the sides of the flower and do just that. So you're going to see me start to pick up that darker purple again. And I'm just running a soft shadow along the edge. And then I'll pick up that pink and start to pull it outward. So little circles and pulling it outwards. So that when I zoom out, you can really see how cool this is going to be out here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that over here and in there. Take your time with this, have fun, and then when we come back we're going to do just a little bit more with the purple. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into the oysteroid area right down in here. You can see that we've got that central space there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in with a little bit of that pink first and do a really soft dusting of the pink in each of these. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a little bit of a light source here. And then I'm also going to come in with a little bit of that purple and dust in that purple. And then I'm going to come back in with that pink and just start to blur some of it out so that we get a soft kind of gemstone feel. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to do the same. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to work with these little circles in here. So I've gone and picked up my Micron P and pen. And I'm going to go in to these little circles that we have in here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in right up at the top here and I'm going to just bring a little half moon in there and then I'm going to puddle in the area in here. Now this pen is a little bit old but the key to working with these micron pens is to allow just very little pressure onto the pen and the ink will flow. And you can see that that brings a really neat graphic feel to the piece. So I'm just going to go around and do the same thing in all of these. And it's really going to give this a little pop. So I'm going to go ahead and do mine. You go ahead and finish up yours. 
and just really enjoy working with the ink. It's so much fun to work with the microns. They're just such a, a, a pleasure to work with. You know, one of the things that they talk about in Zentangle is offering gratitude for your materials. And I really am grateful that I found out about these pens because they are such a nice pen to work with. All right, I'm going to work on mine. You go finish up yours. And then when we come back, we're going to do a little bit more shading in our leaves. Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around and I'm really loving the way that that black looks with this piece. It's really making it pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into the waves that we have in here and you'll notice that I have the yellow in my hand and that's because we've got the yellow out here but nothing tying in the yellow into the center. And so I'm going to come into the waves here and we're going to start by dusting in a little bit of yellow on each side of the wave here. So we're looking for a connection that's just going to give it a little bit of pop. And you'll notice that I'm not going to the top of the wave. I'm just staying down below. So just really nice and soft. And just letting that pop right into the center here. So we're looking for connection. And I think that's really what's going to give this a little bit of connection in here. Now you're also going to see me pick up my white pencil and I'm going to start to dust in a little bit of that white just to calm that yellow down a little bit and also give it a little bit of a blur. The yellow next to the gray is really beautiful. turning the tile and making it work. Super fun. And then when I zoom out, you can see that that's now pulling the yellow through the piece, which is really nice. It's giving it a little bit of interest, which is what we were going for, because it felt a little bit flat before. Okay, now let's talk about the leaves here because they are still feeling a little bit sharp to me. The color is a little bit sharp. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my graphite pencil here and I'm going to come up into these yellow leaves and I'm just going to start to add a dusting of that graphite into the yellow. And what I love about working with graphite over the color pencil is that it takes the color and it mutes it down a little bit. It gives it kind of a rustic feel. And so once I have that, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that white and I'm going to do little circles blurring out the graphite and pulling it into the yellow a little bit. You can see that it almost gets this kind of polymer color to it. Really kind of taking it and bringing a little bit of softness to that yellow. So I'm going to do that in all of my yellows here. And you can also bring it into the greens if you feel like the green is a little bit sharp for you too. So I'm going to go ahead and do mine. You go ahead and do yours. And then when we come back, we're going to work on some finishing touches. So you can see that just adding that little bit of gray into it and putting a little bit of shading in it has made those leaves become more dimensional, which I really enjoy and I hope you do too. So one of the last things that I'm going to do with this is I want my background to feel a little bit more watercolory in nature. And you can see that I've started to dust some blue into the background in a random way. And so I'm going to come in here and start to add in a little bit of blues into where some of those light pieces are just in a really random way. You're going to see me just kind of float around and add a little bit of that 
blue in there in between those purples. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of the yellow and start to dust in just a little bit of that yellow in random spots as well, just to give that background a little bit of interest and a little bit of pop. So you're going to see me just come in and lightly move that color around in some of those areas. And you can see that just by doing a little bit of that, it really makes a big difference. And if you want, you can always pick up your pencil, your white pencil, and soften it up a little bit just to give it a little bit of interest. You want to be really careful that you're not dragging around too much of the blues into the yellow and vice versa. So you can see that I'm going to clean this off and just start to roll some of that white around on the yellow itself. And you can see that that really brings a neat feeling to the background of the piece, which I really like and I hope you do too. I think I'm going to add just a little dusting of blue right in here as well. So go ahead and play with your background. See what feels good to you. I think I'm going to just dust a little blues into there and it looks like I need to do a little line work in there too. All right, you go ahead and finish up yours. Is that fun or what? I'm really enjoying this piece. I hope you are too. And so I've gone ahead and I've picked up my white gel pen. I have the Mizu Love in my hand here, but you could use the Sakura White or the Signo White Uniball pen. And I'm just going to come into the gemstone here and add a little bit of a light sheen into the gemstone. Now if you don't have a white pen you don't have to worry about doing this part but these are really great to invest in. You can get these off of Amazon and there's three to a box and I think you get it for about six dollars and it just adds a really nice feel to your piece. So you can see that I've added a couple of dots in there and then I think I'm going to come up into my leaves and add a little bit of sheen into the leaves as well. You can see that all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of a line and a couple of dots right beneath just to give it some interest and just flipping that over to the other side and doing the same thing as well. And I just love what the white pen can do. It just brings so much into the piece. So go ahead and play with yours. And I hope that you enjoy working with that white pen as much as I do, because it really just does bring in that element of um, just a little bit of finishing that it doesn't have before. So play with that. And then when we come back, we are going to finish up. So as we're nearing the end of the piece here, one of the things that I did was I came in with just with a little bit of yellow and started to add a little yellow around the inside of the gemstone in here on either side. You'll notice that I left a little white up at the top and down at the bottom. And then I grabbed just a little bit of graphite to just give this a little bit of a shadow on either side. And then I lifted up my white pencil and just added a little bit of blurring of the graphite just to give it a little bit of softness. And it gives it kind of a goldish feel, which I really liked. So this is the point where I would look around the piece and see if there's any ink that needs to be cleaned up around the piece or if one of my lines isn't connecting or if I need to pool my ink in another spot. But otherwise I'm feeling pretty good about this. And I've gone and I've added my little initial down here. I like to hide my initial in the piece. That way it just kind of indicates that I'm finished with it. And I really am really happy with the way this one turned out. It's got a really unique feeling to it. So I hope you enjoyed the class. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or leave it a nice review. Even better, go ahead and hit the subscribe button in the upper uh, right-hand corner, and that way you'll be notified anytime I add a video to my channel. 
So that's it for me. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. I'd love to see your work. So if you want to join us on Facebook, we do have a really great community on Facebook. It's called the Tangled Yogi Art Community page. And if you go there and answer a couple of the questions, we let you into the group and you can share your creations with everybody so that we can all see how we each did the video. And it's, it's a lot of fun to see how differently everybody does it. All right. Well, thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.